In a previous tutorial video for Adobe Illustrator, we talked about the difference between a stroke and a fill. Again, just to reiterate that, a fill is the inside color of a closed shape, and the stroke is the outside outline. So in this particular wing we have here, we have a light gray fill and a black outline. But as we look at this, we'll notice that we also have some white colors, and those provide the highlights and then we have some darker gray for the shadows. So let's talk about using more sophisticated color techniques in Adobe Illustrator. As you can see, I've reset my Essentials workspace to show the color, swatches, color guide, and gradient panels. In addition, I've added this other panel called Cooler, and you can find that by going to Window, Extensions, and choosing Cooler. Cooler is basically a color, color web app and it comes with Creative Cloud or you can get it actually on the web by going to cooler.adobe.com and this allows you to create color schemes. So you can choose your colors, you can do a different color rule. So let's say I want to do complementary colors and kind of move it around here and it gives you a whole color palette. In addition, I can go to explore and I can explore popular themes, newest themes, and then if I were to sign in, I can go in and create my own themes. The cool thing about using Cooler is that when you have this open and you have to be connected to the internet, you'll see a bunch of these themes that other people have created and you can kind of search here based on most popular, the newest, and you can even search. So you can search for your particular username and all of the themes that you've created under your username will pop up. So the cool thing again about this is that with that cooler panel selected, I can click this add selected theme to swatches. So let's say I do like this vintage Ralph Lauren. I can click that and all of a sudden in my swatches panel, it'll probably take a second, but a group will show up with all of those colors. And if I create my own group, I can eventually click on that group and then click upload from swatch panel to cooler community. So if I create a group of colors here that I really like and I want to keep, then I can definitely do that as well. So when it comes to setting up my workspace, once I got all of those panels in place, I went up to the workspace quick menu and chose new workspace and renamed it color. So anytime I'm just working on coloring something, I can go to this workspace and it's going to be a lot easier for me. So at this point, if I want to change the fill color of something, I can click on it and let's say I go up here and I can choose from these basic swatches that are going to come up for almost every project. But if I click, first of all, that's not exactly what I was going for, but I also don't like the fact that I can only pick from this certain amount of swatches. Now, these are not the only ones, it's just that there are so many that Adobe doesn't really want to put them all up there for you. So you have a couple of options. You can go to this library panel or this library button and scroll down here and there's a bunch of color libraries. So let's say I wanted to do um, color properties and I wanted to do bright. Then we have a bunch of color groups that we can use and I can drag them over onto my swatches panel and then these become quickly available for me in my swatches panel. In addition, I can start creating my own color groups. So I'll click the new color group folder and I'll call this favorite colors. And then I will do, let's see, from selected swatches and click OK. And it just has an empty color group right now. But in the color panel, I can double click the fill color and let's try to find some of my favorite colors. So I really kind of like this dark teal color. And oops, this needs to be on CMYK. So now I can see that dark teal color and I can come down to my swatches panel and click new swatch and that's gonna allow me to call this dark teal and you don't have to name it, but I like to do it. So I'll click okay. And now that becomes a new swatch in my swatches panel. Now I can drag that and you can see the little drop line and I can drop it into my favorite colors group. And as I hover over, you can see the name. Now, if you don't like naming them necessarily, so let's say I like this, kind of like this reddish dark pink. So if I like this color, if I hold the Alt or the Option key on my keyboard and click New Swatch, 
It's just going to add the new swatch and skip that whole naming dialog box. So now I have a color group with my favorite colors. So let's talk about how we can possibly recolor this so that we can still have the depth and the style that was drawn into these wings, but without filling it with a whole specific color. So I'll go ahead and undo, oops, nope, I don't want to do that. So this wing is just filled with color and we don't want to do that. So let's talk about this wing. So we can turn this into a live paint group and that's going to be the easiest option for us. So if I go over here under the shape builder tool, I can click the live paint bucket. And as I click, it's going to tell you, you have to click with the live paint bucket and then paint the areas between the paths. So you can either do the method that's shown here, or I can click on the object, go to object, live paint, make, and now I'm just going to click off so it's not highlighted. Now when I grab that live paint bucket tool, I can start painting anywhere inside of these wings. And the cool thing is, let's say I'm on this bright color group and I start painting with orange. As you can see, the live paint bucket has swatches in the upper left hand corner. And if I use my arrow keys on the keyboard, I can start switching between all of those colors. So if all of a sudden I want to do some green, I can definitely do green that way. Then I can switch to purple and start painting some purple. And then I can switch over back to this orange. And it's only going through the swatches that are in this group. If I was up here, and again, watch as I use my arrow keys, it's going to go through all the swatches in that particular open freeform group. All right, so this, just so you know, you can paint more than just solid colors. If you go to the swatches library, there's definitely some gradients. So go to gems and jewels. Let's say I want to paint some gradient colors in there. And then I can also go to patterns and let's just do dots so we can see how that'll work. And for dots, I can click in here and it's going to add some dots to my particular wings. So that those ones aren't showing that great, but okay. So what if we don't want to make this a live paint object? Well, we have four colors in this particular, um, in each of these particular wings, which by the way, were created by vectorpack.net. So when I click on this, I can actually recolor the artwork. When I zoom in, you can see that we have four colors. We have a light gray, then we have the dark gray for shadows, we have white for highlights, and then the strokes are made up of black. So if I click this object, in the top options bar, there's the recolor artwork button. So I'll click on that, and it's trying to tell you that these are the four colors that you currently have in your document. Now you can change these colors by saying, okay, for this particular gray color, I want it to be, let's say I want it to be blue. Now it doesn't look like it really did anything. So let's try that one more time and click OK and it's still not going to do anything. Well, what we need to do is we need to come over here to edit because all of our little color stops are actually still on the gray and blue. So now when I pull these two out, you should start to see some changes. So now this blue is relating to that dark gray for the shadows and this yellow is relating to that light gray that makes up the majority of the wing. So if I come back to assign, now you can see the dark gray areas I've told them to be blue and the light gray I've told it to be green. What about the black and the white areas? Let's double click here and it says, do you want to add a new color? So I can say yes and it does it to the black for some reason. So you're going to try it and it's not going to do anything the first time. But again, I'm going to try it one more time and all of a sudden it does change it. So I can double click here to add one for the white. And again, let's try to do kind of a garish color so you can see what's happening. Now that's not very pretty, but it's an easy way to give assign other colors to the four basic gray colors that came with this project. So I can go back in and I can move these color stops around and try to change what my object looks like and any ones that I don't need I can come here and do remove color tool so let's say I want to remove that one and then I can definitely link all of my harmony colors which means I can come up here and do these color theories or color rules so if I wanted to do a right complement that's going to make sure that they're all linked 
So whichever base color I grab, it's going to automatically turn all the other colors into colors that are considered a right complement. So again, I can come here and I can choose other libraries. I can apply the bright styles here. And then if I come back to the assign, you'll see randomly change the color order. So it's choosing from those particular colors in that library. So I can just randomly keep doing that. So the reason why the recolor artwork is really great is you might get through a whole project and you might have colored it in the way you thought was good at the time. And then you start to realize that some things just aren't working. And it's going to be really tedious to go through every single piece and make sure you click on it and change the, the fill color. So this is a good way to come here and assign new colors for colors you currently have in the artwork to just get a chance to play around and see what it might look like. And it's not going to hurt anything if you hit cancel. It'll go back to the original way the artwork was supposed to look.